Okay, well, I guess it's time to admit it. I was wrong about MMOs. How many times over the years in conversations about this genre have you heard the following? It gets good at endgame. Or what about this one? The real game starts at endgame. I know I've heard this countless time for many years. In fact, I've thought and said as much myself that for the most part, MMOs, the game doesn't really get going until the max level or until endgame. And there is some truth to that for sure. And there's a lot of truth to it. That's why it's said very often. So for example, in most MMOs, it's not until max level that you'll have things like your class's full suite of abilities and spells unlocked, or access to the most difficult content, be that the dungeons, raids, or PvP. And in doing those things, that's where you start acquiring the gear that often comes with additional build and playstyle altering effects. And with all of those elements, with all of those things coming together, it is at the end game when you really start to master your class, be that getting better at executing your rotations or increasing your reaction time and expanding your game knowledge in dungeon mechanics or PvP matchups, whatever the case may be, there is a whole extra layer of things that while they might not be exclusive to endgame, they certainly start to come together, everything starts coming online and is far more focused at the endgame in MMOs. On top of that, having a good amount of fleshed out endgame content, that is vital for any MMO that hopes to have long-term success. Like it takes developers five to 10 years to build the leveling process that in many cases nowadays, the hardest of hardcore players are finishing in under a week's worth of time. So yes, you need that repeatable end game PVE and PVP content to be solid, to be really well thought out if you want those players to stick around after that first few weeks and that first month, which for most MMO developers, they do want that because they have recurring income sources via things like subscriptions, battle passes, or season passes and the like. They would like you to keep on playing so you keep on paying this keeps the lights on and ideally it means the game will continue to get supported so yes end game is very important I'm not denying that, but I also think that in focusing so heavily on the end game, we've also lost sight of the fact that the journey to that point needs to also be good. And that is what I was wrong about. It gets good at end game doesn't cut it. Uh, in fact, I would argue that a major reason many new MMOs have failed over this past 10, 15, or 20 years is because that journey to max level is phoned in. It is paint by numbers of an experience and seems to be made the way that it often is because, I don't know, MMOs have always been designed this way and that's how it sort of feels. And if we ever hope to rekindle the magic of the MMO genre, and I think we can, and certainly we will one of these days, but first, in order for that to happen, these games need to start putting more thought into the journey to end game. It shouldn't just be a footnote. It shouldn't just be something that you get through before things get good. The game needs to be good right away and it needs to be good all along the way. And even more so, I don't think we should be breezing through this process either. What exactly am I talking about? Well, I'll tell you after a word from today's sponsor, New World. Today's video is sponsored by New World Aeternum. The game is getting an update along with, at long last, a full-on console release with cross-platform functionality between PC, PS5, and Xbox Series X and S. So everything from the original game will be here, but also there's some additions, changes, and improvements, including entirely new features and systems. The new content includes a 10-man raid, new PvP zone, repeatable endgame soul trials, cross-world arenas, and a revamp to the Cutlass Keys zone with new quests and enemies. There's also some quality of life features. They've added swimming to the game, made combat improvements, and to go along with the console release, there is now full native controller support and a host of accessibility features. So this coming weekend, they are hosting a cross-platform beta test. It is fully open beta with no buy-in, so anyone who's interested can jump in and check it out for free. The beta will include the new changes to the early game story and progression, and it lets you level up to a cap of 30, which gives you the chance to check out all the new content up to that point Point, which includes arenas, the faction system, mounts, and the first early game dungeon. If you would like to check out New World Aeternum and see some of this new content yourself, you can pre-download the open beta on Steam, Xbox, or PlayStation 5 after 9 a.m. Pacific time on September the 11th, with the beta officially going live on September 13th. Okay, so I'm going to give you a quick quiz here, okay? What MMO 
am I talking about? So the game starts out after character creation with you loading into a humble little village. There's a nearby NPC who has a quest marker right above their head with a task for you to go complete in the nearby area. You finish that quest and are then pointed to a camp further beyond where you find a pair of NPCs who also need help. And then before you know it, you've completed a bunch of quests, you've killed some wildlife monsters and bandits, you've leveled up a few times, you've moved through a handful of hubs and explored all the areas in the starting zone. You are then directed to a nearby adjacent zone, which is a bit visually different from the last one. And here you find yet another NPC with another quest. And this whole thing takes you somewhere in the vicinity of one or two hours, give or take. You repeat the process in this second zone, and then roughly one to two hours later, you find yourself arriving in the third zone, and you rinse and repeat this process until you eventually reach max level. Okay. So what MMO am I talking about here? If you guess Retail WoW, you are correct. There's been a lot of discussion recently about how fast leveling is in this most recent expansion, with many players clocking in just shy of 10 hours to go from levels 70 to 80. But the War Within aside, leveling hasn't been much difficult or time consuming in Retail WoW in a very long time, especially when you're starting a fresh character beginning at level one, you are just blazing through these initial zones, going through several of them in under five hours. However, this isn't exactly specific to retail wow, is it? Because if you thought I was talking about Lost Ark, you were correct. If you thought I was talking about The Elder Scrolls Online, you were correct. If you thought about Neverwinter, of Taurus Land, if you thought I was talking about the upcoming release of Throne and Liberty, you were correct in all those instances. If you thought I was talking about any of the failed MMOs over this past 10 or 15 years, you were correct. And if you were thinking of any in-development MMOs, I am guessing when we eventually play them in the next five to 10 years, we will learn you were probably also once again correct. The experience that I outlined here is near identical in so many of these games. But really, the part that I'm talking about isn't the questing hub portion. I don't think there's anything wrong with the design of uh, questing hubs directing you through and around and then into the next zone. That in and of itself isn't really a problem. Really, it's all about the speed in which this is happening and, and what you're doing within that time. In so many modern MMOs, the leveling has been designed as a means to an end, something to get through as quickly as possible so you can start really playing the game. And that's where I think we've lost our way. We are so focused on getting to the quote good parts of MMOs that we are blazing through what should also be the good parts of the game. Part of this can definitely be attributed to player mentality. Like there is a desire that people have to rush through to get to max level as quickly as possible. It's absolutely true. I've noticed it in my own play experience for sure. And I often see it talked about as being a big difference in the MMO player base nowadays versus say how it was 20 years ago. Now I wanna make it clear, we had min maxers back then as well, but generally, we all sucked together. Like even the min maxers in 2004 were by today's standards comparatively total and complete noobs. But player mentality aside, many of these games are now also just designed this way where the leveling is structured and paced in a manner that it can be blazed through. I mean, currently, if you're starting brand new with a fresh character, you never played the game before, you can reach max level in the Elder Scrolls Online, for example, takes about 50 hours. Guild Wars 2 is like 30 to 35 hours. Retail WoW can take about 25 hours. Lost Ark's like 10 hours. And Throne and Liberty, that's like six or five hours. Now keep in mind, these are all very rough estimates. It's highly variable depending on player skill and also your play style. And on top of that, in many cases here, it can be much faster. You can reach max level in a lot of these games in like under five hours. And then of course, on the flip side, it can also take a whole heck of a lot longer. But but as a rough guideline for people playing the game what we would consider normally as the developer intended, doing a quest, killing mobs, and going through the zones sort of like at a natural pacing, those rough estimates are the generally what you can expect for each of these games. And these estimates are just so much more streamlined and fast-tracked and way faster pacing than what we saw in a lot of MMOs in the past. And I would argue that the faster leveling often equates to less time spent in each individual part of the world. You're spending less time in each of the zones as you go through them, and this has created less of a connection to these worlds. And that then results in a less immersive experience in an MMO that isn't 
isn't as immersive definitely loses much of the magic that I think makes the genre great. I really do think that this is one of the bigger problems with modern MMOs. There's a lot of factors that go into an MMO being good, but on top of all of those, the fact that we are blazing through 90% of the content so fast to get to the remaining 10% of the content as quickly as possible, which we naturally, inevitably, grow tired of because so much about MMO Endgame basically equates to doing the same things over and over and over again. Doing the same dailies, going along the same farming routes, doing the same PvP battlegrounds, and running the same dungeons. So not too long ago, there was a new game revealed called Fellowship. It is called a multiplayer online action game with what they say has endlessly scaling dungeons. The idea here is that the entire thing is basically just MMO inspired Endgame dungeon run runs as if you were to take World of Warcraft, pull out all the Mythic Plus content, and then just have that be its very own game. So when describing Fellowship, the developer, Chief Rebel, says, you can jump into the endgame content straight away, and you don't have to spend hours and hours grinding just to get to the fun stuff. Now, I am going to check out Fellowship. I actually think it looks quite interesting, and it could be a lot of fun on its own. But when thinking about MMOs in particular, I realized that I don't agree that the best part of the genre is running its dungeons over and over and over again. That is fun for sure, like I enjoy that content, the process of stepping into a dungeon for the first time and then going through it, learning it in and out, run after run, learning every mob and boss encounter until you eventually have every single engagement memorized. That whole arc up to the point of getting a dungeon to farm status, that process can be very enjoyable. It is very enjoyable. I like it, but it's not my favorite part of MMOs and I don't even think it's the most fun part part either. For me, my favorite part, what I like the most about this genre is the world and everything that happens within it as you play, as you discover, and as you learn the game. So much of that can and I think should be while going through the exploring and leveling process for the first time. I don't want to be in and out of a zone in under two hours like we see in a lot of MMOs nowadays. I want to steep in it. I want to be immersed. And I think that is, like I said, a big part of what's been lost with leveling being streamlined and us being fast-tracked straight into the end game dungeon farming as soon as possible, we are losing this massive chunk in the middle. And if that chunk's not engaging enough, then you, you also have the problem of people quitting before they even get to the end game. And to be precise, I'm not even talking about the aspect of leveling itself. There's nothing like inherently fun about getting the enough experience to go from levels 10 to 11. You get the process of slowly unlocking and, and, and kind of opening up your character as it gets more abilities, more passive and active spells. That is cool. But the fun part is the things that you're doing in the process while that power progression is also happening because I'm really talking about exploring the world discovering and engaging in things moving through the zones completing quests grinding mobs exploring the terrain doing whatever activities the MMO has and of course ideally interacting with other players in some capacity along the way these are the moments that what have created some of my best memories um, in all my time playing this genre and I think when games are speeding up that process they're speeding speeding up the exploration and discovery of the world and the level by virtue of the leveling that we miss out on a lot of potential. So recently, Greg Street, also known as Ghost Crawler, touched on this topic. Previously, having worked on World of Warcraft and the Riot MMO, he is now the studio head of Fantastic Pixel Castle, who have their own new MMO in development. It's still like probably at least five years away, but they're working on a game. Now, last week, Greg posted a, the following thread in which he said, someone asked me if it's a mistake to streamline the level leveling experience and let players get to endgame ASAP because that's what they love? My answer is yes. I think it's the leveling experience that we all fell in love with and invested in MMOs. He is absolutely on point with that statement. I 100% agree. And then he went on to say, I think getting to level cap should be an accomplishment and not a blip. The end game is very, very important and a lot of MMOs fail because they have a good leveling experience and a lame end game, so we won't forsake that. I'll push back here and say that I don't think a lot of modern MMOs actually do deliver on a good leveling experience. They have a phoned in leveling experience, like I said, and then an end game that also doesn't hold up. Obviously, the MMOs that have stuck around over this past 10, 15, 20, 
20 years. They have delivered that in some sense, but a lot of the ones, the ones that have come and gone, they have failed at both the end game, but also the leveling and immersion. And then he wraps up by saying, but I also think the leveling should be challenging and a bit of effort and not something you cruise through so that you can start raiding. Even when I was on WoW, I held this opinion. So taking what Greg said here, much of which I agree with, um, I, I think that a lot of MMOs would be best served doing the following. The trend of shortening the leveling process, I think is the wrong direction. We should be extending the leveling process. And I am not suggesting just creating artificial grinds, but rather having engaging combat right from the get-go and then filling the world with content so that the whole experience is fun from levels one all the way to max level. Let us spend time in these worlds. Let us get immersed. Have us be in these zones long enough so that we actually get to know them rather than making a character and going from the Shire to the gates of Mordor in eight hours. No, thank you. That's way too accelerated to really get invested in the space. And that's what I want from my MMOs. Because when leveling isn't set to 10x speed and you spend several afternoons in one zone rather than just one or two hours, you can really get to know it, doing quests that send you back to prior areas, finding grinding spots, exploring and revisiting sections, discovering new things that you hadn't seen before while you're doing all of this. This whole thing can pull you in and again, add a lot of immersion. I will also add here, I think traversal plays a big role. Slowing down the speed at which players can get from one end of the world to another helps also to create immersion. Fast travel can come into the equation, but I think if it does, it should be much later down the road. In fact, the most immersive MMOs that I've ever played have all relied heavily on real-time travel methods. So first, this is you walking with your character, but then introducing things like flight paths, ox carts, blimps, and trains, eventually getting access to your own personal mounts, but the traversal should not be me instantly going from the starter area, instantly fast traveling to the next area. I, I think at the very least, while games can have this and every game is different, I do think that takes away and pulls you out of the world immersion. And then also leaning into Greg's mention of difficulty as well, I agree that this is a big factor. I don't believe we need to go the route of having every mob in the open world require a full five-man group with a tank healer and damage dealers. That's a bit much, but making the world so that it's dangerous enough so that players are best served occasionally working together. That is absolutely huge. It helps so much. This was made super evident last year playing hardcore classic WoW, where just one wrong move would mean your character's demise. But even in regular classic, the difficulty was at such a level that it almost forced a sense of community. And this is how it was back in 2004. This is how it was in the MMOs that I played before WoW and playing Ashron's Call and playing EverQuest and, and many of those pre-WoW MMOs. In many of these games, if you pulled one extra mob, if you pulled two mobs instead of one, it probably resulted in a corpse run, which meant you losing time and having to go back to your character. And when everyone in the game has this shame, same shared experience, you see people just naturally working together. Even if it is just quid pro quo, that's fine. It adds that sense of camaraderie and community because we're all going through the same struggle. So slowing down the leveling, sticking to real-time travel speeds, that helps keep us immersed, and then making combat encounters uh, enough of a challenge that the threat of dying is ever present. These things all really help to create a much more immersive experience on the journey to max level, and that immersion helps create many more memories, in my opinion. And yeah, when we get to the max level, as we've discussed, endgame is very important for long-term player retention. You need to have a good loop of activities and things for people to do. That is what's gonna keep your most dedicated players active long term but it just feels like so many MMOs nowadays have made the leveling portion to and getting towards end game just a means to an end instead of having that also be an actually enjoyable part of the experience um, it's more of just something for you to suffer through so yes I fully admit I was wrong about MMOs the real game doesn't start at end game it starts when we first log in, and the best MMOs I've ever played do a good job of making that journey to endgame memorable and immersive, and I am looking forward to whatever new MMO comes along that does this once again as well, because I think that is, there's a lot of elements that go into having a good MMO. You need that good endgame, you need the repeatable content, and even though we're repeating that content over and over and over again, we're farming the same dungeons, we're doing the same raids, we're engaging in PvP in the same areas, we're 
we're going along the same resource gathering routes we're crafting the same items a hundred times even though there's a repetition innate to end game and mmos the mmos that make that repetition feel fresh in some capacity mixing things up in some way those are the ones that have a lot of success uh and players tend to stick around with the end game but there's so much that goes into it right you need to create an interesting world you need a good combat you absolutely need good combat it needs to be snappy engaging and have a a, a, a visceral feel to it and you can even do that in tab target games because there are tab target games that do a really good job of tab target and ones that do a really terrible job at it upcoming mmo might give you a, a example of the bad although i've heard throne and liberty's gotten a little bit better but anywho there's a lot that goes into making a good mmo but i i really wanted to just discuss this portion of it and that's the fact that it seems like so many games in the past 10 years in particular have have just made leveling like an afterthought right and they haven't created these immersive experiences by design partially by player by player impetus by players desire to get to max level up as soon as possible but developers need to design the games in a way that force that immersion that force that slowing down that creates that more memorable experience that's just my opinion uh, hopefully we get another one of these sometime in the next decade we'll see that's gonna do it for today's video though thank you as always for watching hope you enjoyed it see y'all next time